Welcome everyone, I am Jacob from DeltaForceNetworks.com and I will be presenting tips and tricks to pass Cisco CCNA ICND1 and ICND2. This is updated for the new version that came out last year. Now the first thing you're obviously going to need to do is register over at PearsonView.com for an account and get set up for a proctored exam through them. Now their proctors work with a ton of different vendors. When you go to their website, you'll see just how many they actually work with. So the chances of the proctor knowing anything specific for Cisco or even the exam that you're taking is probably going to be very slim. Now, Cisco and whatever vendor they're working with, give them instructions on what to do, what's allowed. So some of the rules kind of are determined on how they interpret it. Uh, so it's a good thing to ask a lot of questions on what is or is not allowed during the exam. And that will kind of roll into the next part about that, which is there's a 15 minute tutorial at the beginning of the exam. Before the actual exam starts, you have this 15 minutes to learn how the interface works that you'll be using during the exam. Now, most proctors I've talked to will allow you to write notes on the dry erase board that they give you. Now, definitely ask for permission before you try to do this. Ask them if you can take notes during the tutorial because some of the tricks that I'm gonna show you later on in the video, uh, that's a great time to write those down and will save you lots of time on any sort of cheat sheets you come up with that you plan to write down during the exam. So this is gold right here. Getting through the tutorial really only takes about five minutes and that's going at a slow pace and actually really learning it. Uh, the good thing is when you take ICND2, you'll have already done the tutorial and you'll have even more time. So this is great right here. Now for the exam, what you want to do is before you take the exam, go to the website, look at, uh, and we'll have another video posted about this too in the future exactly how to do this, where to find it, and how to do the math on it. What you'll want to do is find out how many questions could be on the exam, so that, and you'll want to do the math for uh, kind of the low and the high end, so that way you have a good idea of how much time you have per question. Uh, this is good, so when you get to the halfway mark, uh, number-wise on questions or on time, you can kind of get an idea on where you're at pace-wise if you're going to run out of time or if you're going to have extra time. So that way you can either, you'll know you'll need to speed up uh, to make sure you answer all the questions, or you can actually slow down and take your time on some of the more harder ones uh, like the simulators. Uh, the next big thing is you cannot go back to previous questions. This is huge. Uh, I've known people that would skip a ton of questions that would plan on going back to it and then they get to the end and it wasn't good for them. Needless to say, they did not pass on that attempt. So always answer it before you go on to the next question and make sure you do answer all questions. And the next big thing is, I know I hopefully, uh, Cisco doesn't yell at me for this, but I know a lot of people, their first question is a simulator. I, it happened to me back in the day when I did IC, ICND1 and it was scary because they throw this simulator question at you that has five sub questions inside it. And that's only after you figure out the simulator, you do all the show commands and you find out what they're asking. So chances are once you're done with that first simulator question, five, 10, maybe even 15 minutes have gone by, but don't be alarmed. Uh, the simulator questions do take a lot of time and chances are you're probably going to get one right off the bat to try to throw you in the loop. Uh, once you're done with it, just redo the math on the questions, how much you, how much time you have for each one after that. So then you can kind of get a good understanding of where you're at after each simulator question. Now the next tip is to conserve your space on your dry erase board provided by the proctor. I've talked to a lot of people, including myself that have experienced the dry erase doesn't erase so easily. And I'm not sure if they do that on purpose, but that's life, that's how it is. So conserve your space. 
don't be drawing, do one subnet question on the whole thing and then got black ink all over your hands and face trying to erase it. Now here's what you're going to write down on that dry erase board. And no matter how well you know it or think you know it, write this down. This is what you're going to want to write down, hopefully, in that 15-minute tutorial that they give you. Now I'm not going to explain what all this means. That's going to be another video coming up soon. Because at this point, you should know what this means. And if you don't, well, stay tuned for the next videos. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jacob, why, why are you telling me to write down all this very simple stuff? This stuff that I have memorized. That it, it's so simple. Why would I waste my time even writing this down? I've been studying this for months. But when you're in the exam and you're nervous and you've been drilled with numerous simulator questions and all sorts of stuff, your brain will start doing some funny things to you. And the worst thing is to get the simple ones wrong or to spend too much time on the ones that you should just be blasting through so you have more time on the simulators. So that's why that you want to write this down. No matter what, it saves you time for the harder questions and it ensures that you get the simple questions right like you should. Well, folks, that wraps things up for tips and tricks to pass CCNA, ICND1, and ICND2. Remember to check out and follow our Twitter and Facebook page. The links are below, and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the new videos we plan to release and the ones I mentioned in this one. Uh, DFN and myself would like to thank you for watching this video and hope that it was very helpful. And please leave any questions or comments below, and we'll try to get back to everybody. Thank you.